Good morning. Should we have a general update down by the river? A few things to say today. Um, firstly, would you like to play Electric Car Fire Bingo with me? There's a link in the, in the description. What you do is you submit your name, you choose a county, anywhere in the UK, and you pick a make of electric car. It's a bit like bingo. And then when we get all these local news stories that get sent to me all the time, I'll go, oh, look, it was a Volkswagen and it was in Herefordshire or whatever it might be. Or it could be a car fire in Eastbourne or a bus fire in Ruislip, both of which happened this weekend. Or the bonus round, a Tesla underwater. Who had a Tesla underwater for 100 points? No one had Tesla underwater, did they? Um, but yep, yeah, that actually happened. A Tesla uh, went in off a boat ramp and then was burning underwater. So on electric car fire bingo, if you had Tesla underwater, you win this week's round. But that's basically just a bit of fun because the uh, the fully charged show, it's quite difficult to debunk that, isn't it? And I bet they haven't got anything as fun as that for their followers. So there we go. The Jeff Buys Cars electric car fire bingo game has launched. Next up, um, off the back of the comments of that fire video, can I just say, all fires matter. All lives matter. See what I did there? Even the petrol ones. I know that petrol cars catch fire as well. I know everybody in the comments likes to point out how many petrol cars catch fire. But the point is, they don't catch fire like just often. Well, they don't usually just catch fire randomly. Like I'm sat here now. The ignition is off. My car is not charging. It's highly unlikely that this car would catch fire. And if it did catch fire, I don't have a gigantic bomb underneath me, underneath the passenger seats. That's the difference. So just stop with your, oh, when are you going to report on petrol car fires? They don't make the news because most of the time they're not significant. So that's that. Right. We're in October now. Um, I, th I was thinking of doing a sticker for this, but I thought we could do Stoptober. Stop. Yeah, I'm talking to you here, right? Stop using your private jet, will you? So if you can pledge with me, but maybe put this in the comments. Jeff, I'm taking part in Stoptober. I promise to use my private jet less in October. Just everybody with me and we can really make a difference. Um, so there we go. Stoptober with Jeff Buys Cars. Try and reduce your use of private jets this month, if you can, please. All 80,000 of you. Because that will have a big impact on the quality of the air and if we're introducing a low emission zone uh, for cars, then we should all stop using our private jets. I'm, I'm not gonna be a hypocrite. I can guarantee you, I am not gonna get on a single private jet in October, okay? So hand on heart, I will not be flying on a private jet this month, and you shouldn't either. All right, okay. On to some more serious stuff. The Cornwall fire, the van fire. Um, firstly, thank you to everyone who watched the video and commented. The comments were really nice, and I used a trackable link to go to the GoFundMe giving page. 1,295 people clicked the link from my video, and we reckon there was about 3,000 pounds extra added onto the funding campaign since the video went up. So you guys, 80,000 of you, I know you've all got to stop using your private jets, but there's three grand there from real people going to real people. Wow, you can make a difference with a little bit of YouTube, can't you? Uh, right, update from the uh, Julie with the van. At the minute, I just texted her this morning to see how they are. Um, she's trying to get it onto like morning TV to do some more awareness raising. She's been told that they need to move the van because apparently the battery can reignite up to two weeks after, but she says the van's so burnt out that it's, that's quite unlikely to happen. And again, she just said, thank you, you know, looked at the comments and it seems like there are some nice people out there. So that's great, that, that's really great. Um, what's next? Dino Day. This has been, I've been focusing quite a lot on my other channel, the new channel called Cars Jeff Buys. So go and subscribe to that, please do. It's only got like 500 on there at the moment. So go and subscribe to Cars Jeff Buys for the car content. I will be hosting a dyno day on November the 5th. So that's a Sunday. 
10 o'clock in the morning till about 2, 3 in the afternoon. You don't need to stay all day, but it's a social event. Coffee, cars, chuck your car in a dyno, see how much horsepower it's got, have a laugh, meet some other people. It's a mini car show as well, and get yourself down there. It was a great day. There was a video of the last one, and someone has booked this morning and said, can I leave early because it's my son's christening and we've got some family coming over. Now, if the event was so good last time that this time somebody wants to miss part of their son's christening to be there, then maybe it's worth a look. There's a link in the description. Update on the eBay cars. This car, the Mercedes-Benz SL, the BMW Estate and my Fiesta are all on eBay right now. Uh, they end in a couple of days' time. The Smithy car is at 1,470 quid. The SL is at 2,200. The BMW is at 1,850. And the Fiesta is at a measly 771 pounds. So really, that car deserves to go up. I don't think the BMW will make it to the end of the auction. There's a gentleman who's coming to have a look at it tonight. I suspect that car might go tonight. But I'm okay with that, because what I didn't want to do is have all my eggs in one basket, i.e., all of my eggs finishing at eight o'clock on Wednesday night to then find out that all four people actually say, oh, I'm very sorry, it was my dog that placed a bid, it was my child, or just to ghost me completely, because this is eBay. So I don't mind selling one of them before the auction ends and bird in the hand and all that sort of stuff. But I'll update you on the new channel. Speaking of which, there's a new Volvo that just arrived and there's lots of other content on the new channel as well. Also, my car insurance video, is coming i kept writing the script for it and then more stuff would come out or another article and i noticed that lee mcmaster has posted his video on his experience with his car insurance quote as well so my car insurance video has been a bit delayed because i want to kind of cover a bit of everything i've been getting some car insurance quotes on evs yes the evs have been more expensive than the petrol equivalents but i want to spend a bit more time doing a bit more of that before i launch the video this morning I'm going on an interesting adventure um, based off of a message that came in on Facebook over the weekend. So I'm going urban exploring this morning to go and see if we can find some vehicles that have historical significance. So that'll be uh, a video, probably will be on this channel actually, not so much the other one, but go and subscribe to the other channel. Uh, I hope you're all well. There is lots going on everywhere. I'm, I'm a little bit... Um, almost at the stage where I don't know where to start with a lot of this stuff to address, but I'm just going to plug away one one email at a time. Some of it is really, really dark, and I kind of don't want to know. But at the same time, I feel like if someone emails me, and I look at it, and I think, I look at the title, and I think, oh, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to address that on the channel. Like, maybe that's on me, and maybe I need to. Because that's, that's not me censoring myself that's not me saying i don't want to put that on my youtube that's me being like i don't need to know that right now so you know i've got young kids trying to get on in life and a lot of the stuff that lands in my inbox i'm like what do i do with that how, how do i you know if there's a taxi driver who's giving someone a lift who's recently arrived in the country and that person who's recently arrived in the country tells the taxi driver that he's actually a trained un soldier and if I extrapolate that across what's going on in the UK, what do I do with that information? Can I protect my family from this stuff? Can I go somewhere? Is there anywhere you could go to escape what may or may not be coming? Um, you know, the way, the, way I, the way I looked at it right is, imagine a cardboard square and you live in a little house with your family on the corner of the cardboard square and it's on a plinth. And the one corner of the cardboard square is on fire and no one's coming to save you. So it's inevitable that at some point your house is going to burn and you know that your house is going to burn and yet you carry on you take your kids to school you go to work you pay your taxes you pay your bills each month you wait for payday you take your kids to school you do the same again and you repeat and repeat and repeat but all the while the fire's getting closer and i'm not sure what you do with that information like at what point do you jump off your cardboard square and go find somewhere else and is it going to be safe there is there anywhere that you can escape what's going on at the minute or am I just paranoid and everything's going to be fine? I've got a cold again. I'm all snotty again. And um, again, call me a mentalist, but I was all right until all the planes started again yesterday. The skies have been absolutely hammered for the last few days. I know that they have because everybody sent this to me. 
either in the Something Doesn't Add Up Facebook group or via Instagram or via Twitter or via email. I know that all of our skies are looking the same. Today, I have complete blanket gray cloud cover everywhere. There's not a single break in the clouds, so I'm off to get myself some vitamins and do some urban exploring. Thank you very much for watching this update. Lots more coming later in the week. Hope you're all well.